Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate. I am wearing a Supreme hoodie today. It's a little bit uh, big because it is cold here in Seattle. Uh, there have apparently been snowflake sightings in Redmond and as someone who was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and never thought that there was a place that could handle snow worse than Atlanta, Georgia, Seattle, Washington, Puget Sound is that area. So pray for Mojo that whatever like you know cold snap we have coming in will not be too bad because this is a town that cannot handle any form of snow. But anyway, enough of all that, let's get into this week's latest developer news. So first things first, just a reminder that Microsoft Ignite, we are having a spring Ignite this year, is going to be on March 2nd through the 4th. So it's just a couple of weeks away. Can you believe it's almost March? And so you can go ahead and you can register for the event uh, for free right now. I've got links in the show notes and the description down below. You definitely wanna check it out. We're gonna have lots of great content for IT professionals, for um, you know developers, for people who are into Power Platform, Dynamics, all that stuff, great content. And I know that we, I've, I've had a sneak peek at some of the sessions, really cool stuff that's gonna be announced. So be sure to check that out. Microsoft Ignite is coming in just a couple of weeks. Next up, want to give a shout out to Visual Studio Code, the January 2021 edition or version 1.53 is now out. And this, I think this is the, this is our first release of the new year. This came out, I think about a week and a half ago. Anyway, it's um it's a big update in terms of some of the UI and the UX stuff. There's a new way to do tab wrapping. So if you want to have your tabs to wrap, that's now an option. You can also kind of distinguish like how the wrapping will work and, and make sure that it won't be wrapped um, uh, too much um, if you want to do things like that. But that's like a nice UI option. There are also some changes to how display dialogues work. There's some updates to how you can build extensions. Just a lot of nice little niceties. But you know, Visual Studio Code is my favorite app. The new version is out now. We've got links in the show notes in the description down below to the blog post outlining all the new features as well as where you can go ahead and download it. So check that out. Next up, speaking of Visual Studio Code, the Java team has released their first um, version of the Java extension for Visual Studio Code for 2021. And so this, the big thing with this extension, in addition to some different debugging stuff, is that it's kind of the launch pad for the new Azure Spring Cloud Java extension, which just launched. And so if you have wanted to deploy things with uh, Spring Cloud, there's now a great extension that you can use in Visual Studio Code to make that process even more seamless. So we've got links in the show notes in the description down below where you can learn more about all the updates that have come to the Java extension, as well as the Spring Cloud um, extension and all the other great stuff going on in the Java world. Next up, uh, this was a great blog post from Abel uh, Wang, who is one of our DevOps gurus and gods, really. He's a rock star. And he has a, a great kind of blog and a video outlining what is known as Project uh, Bicep. Bicep. And this is basically next generation ARM templates. And if you're not familiar with ARM templates, it's basically, you know, it's like how we can do infrastructure as code scenarios at Microsoft. And what Project Bicep is, is that it is a way to have um, a domain specific language within um, an ARM template, which will make it easier for you to craft your ARM templates from your favorite code editor, like VS Code, to be able to deploy all the things that you need to do in production. So uh, Abel has a great overview video and an interview with, with one of the product managers um, in his blog post. We've, he's also got links to uh, tutorials that are on GitHub where you can get started and play around with it. This is all still you know, being worked on, but I'm really excited about this. I've um, I guess in the last year or so, really become interested in infrastructure as code stuff. And I think that Project Bicep is awesome. So be sure to check that out in the show notes and the description. Next up, I wanted to give also a shout out, speaking of cool projects we have on GitHub, to uh, Power Toys, Microsoft Power Toys. If you're not familiar, the Power Toys project is basically uh, a project that was spun up, I think it was about a year and a half, close to two years ago, that was um, it's kind of a spiritual successor to the Power Toys that used to be installed with Windows. Windows that you used to be able to get back in Windows back in the day. And these are now free utilities that are available on uh, GitHub um, through, you know, um, I think they're, it's also available through WinGit. And there are a bunch of um, utilities like a, a color picker and uh, Fancy Zones, which is a Windows manager. And uh, there's, you know, a, a launch um, utility, 
lots of other stuff. It's really good. There's some updates that have just come out in the in the latest release. And definitely want to check that out. If you haven't checked out uh, Power Toys, definitely give it a shot. It's one of my favorite utility packages. And Clinton, his whole team do just a fantastic job. So I've got links in the show notes in the description down below to the GitHub repo with the latest release news on that. And next up, uh, I wanted to give a shout out to everyone's favorite developer, Scott Hanselman. Scott has a uh, saying that he says, hey, friends, and he does videos, he does podcasts, he always does blog posts, you know, he is everyone's favorite developer, as I always say. And someone um, on Twitter was like, I want Hey Friends merch. And Scott was like, okay, let's do it. So he spun up some merch. Uh, as I'm recording, this was actually, you know, last night. So as you're going to be watching, this was a couple of nights ago. And um, he designed some merch. It's available in different colors. I got mine in pink, but there's also shirts available in green and then kind of a maroon and, and um, other colors that are available. I think it might be like an orange or something. Um, all of the proceeds are going to Black Girls Code, which is awesome. So if you want to support a great cause, support Scott uh, by showing off the fact that you want to show off hey friends you want to uh, definitely uh, check that out i also wanted to give a shout out to uh, our friend kayla cinnamon who is one of the pms on windows terminal team because she created some fantastic hey friends windows terminal themes that actually go along with the different colored shirts that, that are available and so i've got a link in the show notes in the description to her twitter thread where she has the different hex codes and stuff for setting up the themes in in windows terminal if you want to you know uh, basically get your Hanselman on or be Hanselmanites. I, I'm not really sure Hanselmanies. I'm not really sure what his fandom is called, but anyway, Hey Friends merch and Windows Terminal stuff is available. So thanks Scott. And, and this is for a really good cause. Next up, I also wanted to, uh, speaking of things that are good causes and that are really important, right now it is uh, we, just in time for uh, International uh, Women's Science Days. Uh, the student team and Azure Advocates have put together a really great program called um, uh, Azure Space Mystery, which is kind of following in vain some of the different learning um, I guess, kind of games and programs we've had over the last uh, year or so, like, you know, there's been an Azure Mystery Mansion and there have been some other really fun um, you know, games and, and learning opportunities. This one is um, all about space. And uh, Jen wrote up a great blog post kind of outlining how this works. I've got a link to that. I've also got a link to the space mystery itself. If you know, you or if you've got, you know, a kid, somebody who's getting into coding for the first time wants to check that out. It's really awesome. The way they built it is also really incredible. They really built this game using a lot of web technologies. It's great. So I've got links in the show notes in the description down below to that. Really good stuff. Congrats to that team. Next up, I wanted to give um, a, a call out to a couple of different community posts that we've seen. So one, this was from, this is from David Littlefield, and it is a guide on how to install Ubuntu with a graphical user interface in WSL2. Now, you can obviously install Ubuntu or in lots of other flavors of Linux using WSL2 or the Windows subsystem for Linux, but by default, how that works is that it is, you know, the command line variant. So you are basically, you get a terminal and that's how you're accessing things. But you can also, with um, a little bit of a, you know, a, a couple of extra programs and, and a little bit of shoe leather, you can also install a graphical user interface in WSL2 as well. Now you might be saying, why would I want to do that? Why would I not just use a proper VM? And you know what? In a lot of cases, you should probably just use a proper VM. But this is fun. This is also a really good way if you do have a graphical program that you need to access for some reason, and you don't want to spin up a whole VM to do it, you can do it this way. And so um, Andrew's instructions are really great. I've got a link in the show notes in the description down below. Let me know your thoughts if you have been playing around with with uh, graphic, with like GUI stuff in WSL2. The team is working actively on bringing even better support to that as time goes on. But I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Um, and speaking of also, you know, great community blog posts. This one is from El Bruno, who has uh, an MVP, and he has a great blog post about how he is able to build Docker images from Visual Studio Code remotely from his Raspberry Pi. And he's using this with his Azure IoT stuff. And so he's wanting to build images. He's wanting to do it remotely. He's able to do it all on his Raspberry Pi using Docker. Um, it's really cool stuff. So thank you, Bruno, for writing this uh, blog post. And I've got a link to that in the show notes in the description down below as well. 
on uh, Channel 9 this week, we had lots of really good content. Over on DevOps Lab, uh, Abel and Garvita talk about GitHub Actions on Azure Stack Hub. And so this is a great way if you have an Azure Stack instance or using Azure Stack Hub, you want to use GitHub Actions to bring all of your CLI workflows and, or not CLI, CI, CD workflows um, in, into the experience, you can do that. So uh, be sure to check that episode out. Over on Learn with Dr. G, Sarah has a fantastic introduction to Git, and it's basically kind of a lesson one, kind of an intro to Git. So if you, or again, you know, somebody you know who's wanting to get started in development stuff, wants an approachable way of learning our favorite, yeah, I'm going to say favorite version control system. This is great. Great job, Dr. Sarah. And over on, um, I think our show, uh, uh, Web Dev uh, Wednesdays, Jen has a great guide into what is Tailwind CSS. And I actually talked about Tailwind uh, a few months back when they released um, a big new version. But this is a great primer. Uh, she actually used Tailwind when creating that Azure Space Mystery um, uh, game that I talked about earlier. But if you've been somebody who's been interested in wanting to use a framework like Tailwind CSS and you want to know how it works, this is a really good primer. So it's good stuff. I've got links to all those videos in the show notes in the description down below. Be sure to check them out. And now it is time for my pick of the week. So I was browsing Reddit at like two o'clock in the morning, as one does. And I came across this in the Simpsons subreddit, of which I am a member. And I have to say, I've seen a lot of really great Xbox Series X mods, but this one just might be my favorite. There's no action item here. I, there's no way you can buy this, but maybe it'll give you inspiration if you want to paint your own Xbox uh, or, or you know, whatever and make it Simpsons themed. Honestly, the only thing that would make this better would be if the classic 2003 uh, game Simpsons Hit and Run was remastered and available now on like Game Pass. That would honestly make my life complete. I know that me and a bunch of other fans have been lobbying the studios for a long time to try to make that a reality. Maybe bug them. I don't know. That's my only call to action. But I thought this was great. So to the Reddit poster who created this, great job. Well, that does it for me this week. Uh, if you like this episode, go ahead and give us a like on YouTube. It helps us out. And uh, subscribe to Microsoft Developer for all of your nerd needs. But also, let me know what you think, uh, like, you know, what some of your favorite Xbox Series X mods are in the comments down below, or what your thoughts are on any of the other stories we talked about, things you're looking forward to in the spring, uh, favorite Visual Studio Code extensions, whatever the case may be. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.